another item of news that came up yesterday. Tua Tagovailoa, the Dolphins quarterback, was not cleared to go to the Froth Olympics, a.k.a. the Pro Bowl games that are happening in Las Vegas over the next few days. Something happened last night. Something has happened. I am not watching it, and I'm not actively endorsing a boycott yet, but I will say something I said earlier in the week. If people stop watching this crap, they'll stop putting it on TV. And as long as people watch it, it's going to continue to be on. That's your prerogative as a viewer, but I, it's a bastardization of what football is supposed to be. It's some sort of made-for-TV game show, it feels like. It's, I, I've got no interest in it, and if you, anyone else out there does, enjoy. But anyway, Tua couldn't get cleared to go participate in the Froth Olympics, but now he's cleared from the concussion protocol. I, I, I think that's kind of convenient. It's, it's uh, yeah, I really don't want to go to this Las Vegas thing. So, uh, okay, fine. Not cleared by the deadline for going to the Froth Olympics, but he is cleared now and they, they expect him to be a hundred percent going to the season. And that's fine. I, that, that's good. The question is, can he avoid the next one? And, and th- that, this is where the, the Dolphins are kind of clumsily circling the wagons. Remember they said a couple of weeks ago, he's no more susceptible than anyone else to a concussion. Well, okay, fine, but he is because he's not protecting himself from getting thrown to the ground and having his helmet strike the turf, and he gets a concussion. That's where he's more susceptible to it because yeah. of his style of play. Right. He's not protecting himself. The physics aren't in his favor. So big, large, strong, 300-pound linebacker, lineman, somebody grabs him and tackles him legally, and he whipsaws back, and his head hits the ground, and you get a concussion. That's, that's what's making him more susceptible. So it's great that he's 100%. It's great that he'll be 100%. How long is he going to stay 100%? That's the real question. Is he going to change his style and protect himself, Chris? And nobody's addressed that. No, I, I, you know, I think you raise a good point there. Yeah, maybe not in susceptible in the fact of, okay, he's had three concussions and that makes him more susceptible to have the fourth. But you know, we've, we've hit on this a lot during the year. Yeah, he's susceptible because he's you know, arguably the smallest quarterback in football. That, that's the problem. And I know Kyler Murray, stature-wise, is smaller, but we've discussed this too. He's rocked up. Like, Kyler Murray's a ball of muscle. So that's where it's different. Yeah, they're going to, a little bit like we talked about with the 49ers, they got to be smart here. They got to protect themselves. They got to get a backup that also is an injury prone in Teddy Bridgewater. They got to think about that. But, yeah, that's the number one issue. And I don't know really, like, you know, the change of style of play, I, I don't know if this is – this is not like it's like, hey, this is Josh Allen and he just – it's it's pedal to the metal and he lowers his shoulder and jumps over people and puts them – it's not that. You know, it, this is like uh, – what do you change? What is he doing that's so bad? He's he's small and he's not that fast. So there's a problem there, you know, and that's where – Got to get rid of the ball fast. They got to get rid of the ball faster. They got to get better offensive line and protect. And like we talked about yesterday with Sean Payton and Drew Brees and the Russell Wilson, they got to get a, a, a protection up front or a line up front that, yeah, that is conducive to, wait, our quarterback's smaller and we got to protect him and, and build a wall there, maybe more, you know, than, than some of the other quarterbacks in football. That's how you got to look at it if you want to make it really work with Tua, at least in my opinion. By the way, by the way, yeah. sources say yeah. that our guest list next week in Phoenix includes on Friday. Tua. We're talking about Loa. Boom. How about that? Yep. How about that? That's awesome. All those people out there that think we hate him and he hates us. We don't hate him. We like him. We want what's best for him. We're trying to pierce through the chatter and the noise and get people to understand what the fundamental issue is here so that he can have a long and successful career career and he played extremely well this year he did we said that time and time again he was an mvp candidate for part of the season these guys now and i have reached the age and my son has reached the age where i see my son in an increasing percentage of nfl players because my son is 26 he's older than tua Right. So you understand it that becomes a hell of a lot easier. Right. right. It's a hell of a lot easier to relate to what these young men are going through because I know what kids that age, men that age, go through. And we want what's best for him short term and long term. We're not going to lecture to him. We just want to have a conversation with him about where he is and 
what his vision for the future is, because at some point you've got to not put yourself in a position where you get thrown to the ground and you have your helmet strike the turf because yeah. that's what's causing this. That, exactly. So that, that's the bottom line. That, that Every, everything that we believe here and everything we say is out of position for propping him up and helping him be healthy and successful as a player, as a man, and as somebody who has many years left to, to live and be happy and be productive and not be dragged down by the, the issues that, that will be part of his overall health as he gets older based upon his, his playing career. Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're rooting for him. I, I, I like him too. Yeah. Have I questioned some of the things football wise about his play and that? Sure. But I, I'm, I'm by no stretch of the imagination. Don't, you know, don't I root. I want good things for Tua. I'm rooting for his career. I know how hard it is. You know, I've, I've been a quarterback that's had the injury issue. I mean, I, I feel for him there all the way. Does that mean I'm not going to be honest about my football evaluations all the time? No, no, it, it does not. I'm going to be honest about my football evaluations. But, yeah, we want him to play, and we want him to be healthy. And, and you know, we, we hope the Dolphins could do their best to protect him and the NFL does, the right, does right by him and all of that. Uh, and he did show that he was, you know, a high-end starter this year and could do some special things with their team. So uh, that's where it's awesome. I mean, his career finally got going in the right direction here, and they put the right pieces and ran the right offense that made sense for Tua, and he capitalized. I give him a lot of credit for that. But, yeah, I do worry about this. I mean, it, it, I worry about it. It makes me think about the quarterbacks coming out in this draft. There's some small ones there, right, It make you concerned because how many times did we watch games together on a Sunday this year and go – Oh, look at that guy. He got tackled like Tua, but he didn't his head didn't hit the ground. You know, we would we we said that a quite a few times. Like that's a Tua tackle. But because they're bigger humans being tackled that way, it, it doesn't affect them that way, and that's where we fear for him a little bit. And he really was great in twenty twenty two. And we knew that Mike McDaniel would come in there and design an offense that got the most out of Tua's skills and yeah. abilities. That's the challenge for any coach, and good coaches know how to say this is what my guy does well. I'm going to do it. This is what he doesn't do well. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to adapt the contours of my offense to fit my guy. But one of the things that they all need to do moving forward is come up with ways to get the ball out faster so he doesn't find himself in those spots. And also, also, we want the broader football structure to recognize when – Tua, or anyone else for that matter, has had a head injury and get him off the field. That was the issue in late September with the Bills game when they knew enough to check him out, but they somehow let him go back into the game. Right. And then the issue on Christmas when he, he had a concussion and nobody knew it until the next day when they were talking to him and they were asking him about things that happened in the game, decisions he made, and it was obvious from his answers that something was wrong. Right. So uh, that that you know, it's it's about having concern for the health and well-being of all players. We're we're one month exactly removed from the Demar Hamlin ordeal. It's only been one month, and we all had, if we didn't already believe it, we had our epiphany that night that we have to care about the health and well-being of professional athletes who are playing an inherently violent game. And if we truly do, then we have to care about all issues, not just the possibility of cardiac arrest. We have to care about all the issues and all the potential health issues that they face during a game. And beyond what we saw happen to Mar Hamlin, head and neck is the big thing that we need to be concerned about. And it's having that mechanism in place to protect a guy from the game, from himself, from anyone and everyone who would want him to keep going at a time when he shouldn't keep going. we got to be able to pull those guys out, give them a proper evaluation, and shut them down. And it's still a work in progress yeah. for the NFL to get to the point where it needs to be, Chris. Yeah, it is. It is. We're, you know, we, 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 it's the, the infancy stages still of all of this, and we're evolving, and the league's doing the best it can. I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not you know, mad at them in this department. You know, I, it was disappointing as far as the Tua – you know, like you said, late September, that was a little shaky. And then, yes, not to see Devontae Parker, right, uh, in that football game. I can't remember who the Patriots were playing, uh, but had the little concussion issue. And then, of course, two on Christmas, you're right, those are ones where we just go, hey, like, hey, we're on the right track, but come on, these are things we, we got to be better. We can be better as a league. 
Um, but you know they're they're doing their best, and that's where I'm, I'm not going to discredit the NFL for their efforts here for sure. But it's it's again it's early, and they're trying to figure it out and do it the right way and be fair to the league and be fair to the players. And there's a lot of moving parts here, and you know I know they'll get it right. I mean, there's a part of me that's like, damn, we're we're too protective at this point, but it's a good thing. Uh, it's certainly better, you know, better we're that way than the other way around. One of the things we've analyzed as it relates to Tua, the fact that the team has said in the aftermath of the 2022 season that he's our starter for 2023. And my position has been until you pick up his fifth year option and or sign him to a long term contract, I'm not convinced he's your guy clearly and firmly and unequivocally. And it could just be they're saying it and saying it and saying it just to provide cover until they move in a different direction. And then when they move in a different direction, we've, I mean, we've seen that. We've seen teams and coaches say one thing over and over again and then do something else eventually. And I've just said, hey, actions speak louder than words here. Pick up his fifth-year option. We'll believe he's the guy beyond this year, if he's even the guy when this year begins. Sign him to a long-term contract. We'll believe he's going to be around for more than a year if he gets to be the week one starter. And, and we'll see. Now that Tom Brady's out of the mix, and look, I don't think the Dolphins were going to do any pursuing of Tom Brady behind the scenes, not before the start of free agency after losing a first round pick last year and assuming that 345 Park Avenue is watching everything they do very carefully this year. But if Tom Brady had come to them and said, hey, I'd really like to play for you, I, you know, I, uh, I they would have at least had to have considered it. But now that he's out of the mix, does that make you feel like they, they, they are just going to move forward and not evaluate who else may be out there. I mean, what if Aaron Rodgers comes calling and says, boy, I think we could win a Super Bowl together. Do they just say, no, we're all in on Tua, or do they at least evaluate the possibility of adding Aaron Rodgers? Uh, I don't. I think it's a Tua thing. I think they're going with Tua. Uh, they showed they were capable of playing at a high level. You know, the Rod, you know Rodgers, again, I just would get into the conversation of, you know, again, why upset the apple cart? You don't know what you're getting involved in. You don't also don't know. I mean, is he going to be telling, hey, Mike McDaniel, I want to run these plays. I know that you were awesome with these, but I like these plays. Oh, wait, after the year's over. Oh, hey, you know, I don't know if I'm going to come back and play. Wait, oh, whoa, no, wait, we, we, we had Tua, but now we don't have Tua, and we were going on the right track, but we, we disrupted it for you, and now you're going to screw us over and leave. I just I, – you, you finally – got some value or some payback for the guy you drafted at the number five pick in the overall draft with Tua and got that going. That's where I would go, I don't think so. I, I think that they're they're more, again, in the conversation of, you know, high-end backup. That's where I would invest here. That that would be the thing. Tua, you're the starter, right? You know, someone along the lines of Teddy Bridgewater, again, but not Teddy Bridgewater. You can't have a guy that's injury-prone backed up by a guy that's, like, also the most injury-prone quarterback in football. That's where they got to change something there this year. Uh, but, yeah, I don't envision the Rodgers thing happening, Mike. Uh, I don't know. Do, do you? Do you? I, I, well, it's hard to say no when one of the all-time greats comes knocking on your door. That's right. It's hard to say no as the owner of the team. It's hard to say no as anyone in a position who is trying to win a Super Bowl. But there are caveats, and you have outlined them. But the key is, ultimately, Tua presents a risk of injury. And not just head injury. He had rib injury in 2021, missed some time right. then early in the season, happened against the Buffalo Bills. So Hip in college. Want, and this is one of the areas where Kirk Cousins gets taken for granted. Yeah. And Paul yeah, Allen yeah. was giving me the business about this yesterday when I had my weekly appearance on his radio show on KFAN. The idea that Brock Purdy got injured on the opening drive of the NFC Championship game, and if the 49ers had Kirk Cousins, that wouldn't have happened. I don't, I don't know that I agree because Kirk Cousins has never been hit the way that Brock Purdy was, but we have seen Kirk Cousins get banged around a lot over the course of his time with Minnesota and with Washington, and he always keeps going. And that, that there's a... There's a value in that that gets underrated because it's not noted until a quarterback goes down. Yeah, there's no stat for it. Backup. Yeah, that, that's right. There's no stat. But there, there's a reason, you know, the, the best ability is availability is the saying in the NFL. I mean, that, that that speaks to it right there. And, yeah, there's – there's, it's it's amazing. Yeah, well, I, I, it's just amazing how some guys are are made like that, cut like that, have a 
feel for how to go down and take hits. I mean, I, I look at the three young guys that are playing right now that are the best in our sport. You know, Burrow, Mahomes, and Allen. They take hits where I just go, oh, my, oh, ooh, oh, e. Oh, they're in. Oh, they're in a tough position. And I go. I just sit there and go. Man, I think half of football would have been hurt after that hit. But they seem to be. You know, and it's like Brady too. Same thing. All the hits and the weird positions. Something about it. There's definitely a skill to it. You know, maybe a little luck, sure. But I think there is a skill to it as well, and a feel for where your body is in space and when people are around you. Uh, and and there's something to that as well. And you know, I think that kind of protects the great ones to to go along with what you're saying. It's a sixth sense in some respects. It's understanding yeah, right. when that that hit is coming and where to get your body before. And also, kind of like you know, you hear people say, like, like if somebody is in some sort of an accident, like they get hit by a bike or a car or something, and they aren't braced for it, the, they just the relaxing of it. it is very and big, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we just at a certain point, you just have to go with it. That's you right. You have to accept it if yeah. you try to. If you try to brace yourself and fight against it, something's more likely to crack. That's right. Like you ever been like, you know, you've been ever in the ocean, right? You get crushed by a huge wave. At some point, you just got to go, wait, I can't fight this. I'm going to end up hurting myself more. You just got to go with it and let it knock me around and might hit the sand a little bit, but you're okay. It's, it, there is something to that. When you're, when you're getting hit as a quarterback and you try to fight it, oh, I'm going to hold up or I'm not going to go down here, that's when body parts get stuck in the ground and people fall on things and you get really hurt. There is uh, something to what you're saying, the art of falling down and going with the force that, that can save you. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.